Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. We good? We good? Yeah. How you feel? We good? Good. Teeth. We good? Teeth. 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 Good. Uh, hey there, everybody. Eric from Outer Limitless here with Joe from Survival Attitude. Good morning. What's happening, man? Oh, this is warming up a little bit. It was like 20 degrees this morning. Now it's a blistering 25, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. This is great. Oh, it feels good. Nice sun here. We got mm. ourselves a pretty cool spot to look at. Actually, some pretty nice knives. Mm. So um, I've already done sort of a preliminary look at some knives from the company QSP. Mm. Um, so uh, quality, service, and price. Um, interesting philosophy. Uh, these guys are really taking a step into the market, trying to make a name for themselves. Um, some really great looking knives. Now, uh, we have two videos. Uh, really, one focused on folders, which is now, and another uh, focused on fixed blades. So, we got ourselves a little eye candy and some things to go through. So, um, the plan today. Uh, we're going to take a look at two folding knives. They're actually uh, the same knife, but slightly different design cool. um, on each one of them. And then we'll roll in some competitive options. And I think we should play a little game, uh, sort of name your price type of thing and talk a little bit about value. Okay. I like that. You know, on my channel, it's kind of funny. I don't often cover value. Um, it's one thing that if you watch my channel, you're probably aware. I, I really honestly, I don't often talk about price and right. I don't often talk about value. And for a few reasons, and I'm just going to touch on it real quick. Um, but that's going to be different today. We are going to talk about value and we are going to talk about price. Um, but the reason why I don't often cover value and price is because, first off, Price can vary. It depends on where you go shopping, and it depends on the time of you know year or the you know uh, how far out we are since this video was shot, and things change. So I don't always cover price because I feel like it, it it's you know only one sort of snippet of time, and that's part of the reason. Um, and the other part of the reason is because um, you know depending where you buy it, maybe you're buying something used or it's on you know uh, you know an aftermarket uh, you know um, eBay or you know uh, you know, used uh, product or something like that. But then the other reason is because everybody's budget is different and everybody's impression of value is different. Mm. And so for me to weigh in on opinions on price and value, it's somewhat deceiving. And I don't know how you feel about that, but. Well, I, I noticed that. I, I've watched a lot of your videos, as I have other channels too. And, you know, there is always an MSRP, but the market's changed from a competitive option from Amazon to secondary with eBay. And I buy a lot from eBay. I know you do too, but we make sure the stuff's in 99 percentile, right? Correct. Maybe it's unused, just no box. And you take, you know, 20, 30 percent off or more. Right. But at the end of the day, value is really in the eye of the beholder. Um, with so many makers now, so much gear options, and the internet, you can shop, you can buy, you know, for value, let's say Charade, great brand, performs, value-based. I mean, I get the steels you want at a sheath, but it's going to do the job based on a budget. Maybe sometime you you hit a, a you know, Clark Griswold Jelly of the Month bonus, and you're <laughs> able to buy a, a really nice special knife once a year, okay? So, yeah, budget can be varied, but I think what you just mentioned to me, I'm a little nervous about, guess that price? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. So QSP, cool. again, quality, service, and price. Let's see where they stack up against the competition. So um, at that point, I think we're going to get into it. But uh, before we do, do me a favor. Stay tuned. All right. So as I mentioned, we're going to take a look at QSP Knives 2 folding knives here. Now, um, I have, as I mentioned, already done a quick preliminary look at these um, and we're just going to get a little more in depth today um, so this here as you see um, this is called the puffin cool um, so again uh, two of the same model so this is the qs 127a and qs 127d1 uh, so take your pick man you get to choose a or d1 d1 because i'm division one baby division one here she is good weight Nice packaging, nice packaging. Now it's funny you'd say nice packaging. Um, you know, I say it on my channel a lot. Packaging, eh, it doesn't really matter. However, it always leaves you with a first impression. It does, especially if you're gonna gift an item. Good point. Okay. Ooh, 
nice little uh, paperwork here. I'm gonna take a quick look at that because I'm curious. This me, I'm part, oh, okay, nice, nice card. Thank you for choosing QSP knife. Hope you enjoy it. Here are some specs about your knife. That's really sweet. That's a nice touch. That's a really nice touch. Lifetime warranty, limited lifetime warranty. That's good. Okay, so I've already got a good, oh wow. Oh, I'll tell you, for gift purposes, that's that's presentation, baby. Okay, so let me just pull this thing out. Now it did have a little cellophane wrap on there. Okay, so whatever, yeah, just yeah. Just to protect it, but I had taken that off. Going to eyes closed here for just a quick moment. No sharp edges. That's really nice. See if I can, uh, how we're gonna deploy here. No flip, no thumb stud. Whoa, 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 we have a nail nick? Wait, wait, oh, is this auto? Is there a button? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta open my eyes because I can do this all day. Is that titanium? I'm gonna guess it's titanium. I guess you just, okay, okay, all right, that's interesting. Whoa, nice detent. Ooh. Oh, that is one heavy duty lockup. Holy mackerel. <laughs> that's a real carbon fiber inlay there. Reversible pocket clip. Oh, the blade geometry is outstanding. Nice little clip. Strong as get up. Linear hole. Oh, that's a different. Uh, it looks so you get the flex on the, uh, the travel there. Looks like replaceable, maybe replaceable uh, uh, lock inside. This is first impression awesome. A little sharpening Ricasso there. It's got a good, yeah, it's a good edge. It's a good utility edge. Beautiful, beautiful knife. So let's close it. Let me see, we have a blade centering is nearly perfect. I gotta do it. Oh, nice. Good deep carry. I'm not gonna be able to one hand open it. But in a weird way, I'm okay with that. I actually like the no thumb stud. Everybody does it. You can get caught in the pants. It's almost a hard use gentleman's almost like a slip joint of sort, but it's not a slip joint, obviously, it's a frame lock. I really like it. In fact, I love it. All right, so you're right. It is titanium. So okay. we got the titanium frame. Yep. Uh, we got that carbon fiber. It's inlay, yep. which is nice. Yep. Uh, we got that S35 VN steel with nice. that real nice tumbled finish. Um, I love that drop point design. Now I was looking close and it's definitely not hollow ground. I would say that's a flat grind, maybe just a tiny little bit of a convex to it. I agree with you there. I do think it's a convex flat. Okay. Yeah, definitely not hollow. Definitely not, never not hollow. Nope, nope. Um, but, um, you know, and I am certainly by all means not an expert when it comes to blade laws. So I don't know how far my comments go and if you are uh, somebody who really knows, certainly feel free to put a comment below. But my thoughts being that this would be good for a uh, location, whether it's a state or a country that has a little more strict laws and doesn't um, allow you to have um, you know, a, a deployment method for one hand opening. It requires a, a two hand opening. And I don't mind that it doesn't have a nail nick. Nope. Um, it's very, very clean in appearance. I like the lines. I like how this whole thing just comes together. It looks really, really 
sweet, sharp, clean, and I like your comment. It's almost like a gentleman's uh, sort of hard use folder. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a little bit of a larger blade than you usually get on a gentleman's folder. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a little bit of a uh, maybe uh, you know taller or deeper, as you would say, um, stock and material. Um, so the overall size may be a little bit larger than a typical gentleman's carrying knife, but um, very, very sweet. And I think the quality and craftsmanship of the machining on this looks very, very good. I. Uh... Folders, in a weird way to me, are almost more personal than a fixed blade um, because you're carrying it all the time. You know, even if you're, let's say, you're going to lay down and take a little afternoon snooze, it's in your pocket. You, you want this thing to really feel like it's part of you. Uh, this thing feels like it's part of survival attitude, I, I got to tell you, because <laughs> number one, it is modern. But it's lightweight, but it feels strong. I have no flex on that clip. That thing is locked in, which is important. You have so many wiggle and so many clips. The edges, 100% on this knife, are rounded off, so there's absolutely no hot spots. So something else I noticed too about this knife is on the open position, we have a really nice flat top here. A lot of knives have raised frames. Um, and that gives you that sharp transition. This is just allowing you to purchase that knife anywhere you want along the top and the side. Hold up, hold back. It just flows really sweet. That linear hole is classy. I like it. I like that really oval. Do. I think that's a good look. Um, it's a little different. I mean, a lot of times you just get a straight up hole, but that oval look really nice. Completely hollow frame with no, I forget what you call them. But the standoffs. Standoffs. Yep. You know, and so easy to to clean. Get a Q-tip in there, just clean it out real quick. Exactly, even blow it out. Yep. The uh, I forget the name of this is here. Um, oh, the back, it? like a backspacer. Backspacer, correct. Yep. What I like about this backspacer is it's got your bolts on either end. A lot of backspacers mm. are actually snap-in or sandwiched in. They're utilizing minimalist uh, materials to maximize the strength when you put that you know the, the bolt through either side you're really locking in that backspacer and i think that that gives a really that's just making it feel so stout mm -hmm. you know yeah i'm i'm happy with this i mean i have not yet carried it um and i have not yet used it but i'm very interested to see how it is in the pocket how it is for obviously everyday use um and you know i think uh, they have a number of different styles, but you know, I, to be frank, had my sort of choice of what I wanted to take a look at, mm -hmm. and this was the one that really called out to me. You know, I'm I'm typically a drop point guy. Mm -hmm. um, I like a flat grind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this has a little bit of a you know, it's a sort of a saber, but you know, nice flat grind, uh, good look, beautiful blade shape, nice and clean, classy, and something that for me is just a real good start into this brand and on their folding knives. It just sort of to me is going to set that benchmark for what the rest of the knives should and could be. So definitely uh, interesting overall, and I think this uh, puffin here is very very nice. I love it. I really do. Another thing I'm noticing too is when you have the strength of the titanium on the on the frame, you don't have to use your your stop pin as fr from a bolt perspective. You're able to sandwich that between the frame. Again, adding in the cleanness of the look. I really really like that. And I have to tell you, I thought is too for serviceability. If you ever want to disassemble this knife, I'm, I'm thinking you have one, two. Three, and I think this thing will come apart if you ever need to clean the bearings or whatnot. Um, the blade shape, I absolutely, detent is incredible. Blade shape, I love it, because it's kind of bushcrafty. Yeah. You get in a strength of almost a, 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 a high saber, okay? But the blade shape is just outrageous. I think if you had to do your prying, your whittling, it, it locks up like a fixed blade. Yeah, so I mean, there is no wiggle whatsoever. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. I mean, I have not even tried that yet. So zero blade play, lock, nice and solid, no wiggle, no movement. Um, like you mentioned, as folding it up there, almost perfectly centered. Uh, so very nice. Now, um, again, there are a number of these. So we've looked at the D1 model. Mm -hmm. 
what about the A? Should we take a look at the, the A and compare Let, these things? Let's do it. Last thing I want to do before, and I love the no thumb stud. I just think that's so cool, is I want to look at how far the travel is on the lock. We are roughly 25, I'm going to say 25 to 30%. That is fantastic. I felt like it was a little beyond that 25% mark. Um, yeah, you're right. It's, yes, I'm going to go with 40. I think it's a 40%, but I tell you what, having the replaceable, and it's actually really deep in there, that's really interesting. A lot of them are just squared, but it's looking like inside there, it's actually really deep. So it's a very strong... Um, you know, um, it, I guess adhesion when it comes to that bolt instead of just one little bar going across with a tiny little pin. That's in there really deep and long, so that's going to add to the strength of the knife. If this is this company's first attempt or, or first lineup, I can't even imagine where they're going to go. I want this knife. <laughs> I want this knife We're gonna, now. Maybe we can arm wrestle for it. <laughs> Well, how do you know if you want this one or this one? How do you, how do you, how do you, ah! how do you, how do you really know? You want me to open this one up? You haven't even looked at it yet. How do you know this is the one? You're already calling it? You already, you've already decided All right. this is the one? All right. So there's some colors of survival attitude is just, I get, you know, excited over. Red is, is one of those colors. Oh, good the, thing the inside the of the box. The red packaging yeah. is yeah. just amazing. Uh -huh. I'm wondering what color this thing is. Let's get in here. So again, this is the A model. So the Puffin QS-127A. Okay. It looks like the same frame design with a giant nail nick. The black anodized titanium, I'm assuming. You, it's a little, you still got it, okay. That's what I found. It's not really suitable for opening one-handed. It's okay. It's a great aesthetic. Yep. But it does help with the nail nick portion. Boy, that that is so well built. That one is centered almost dead on. Wow, that snap, it's crisp. Mm -hmm. Do you know if these are on ball bearings? They are on ball They're bearings. They're on ball bearings. Yep. Oh yeah, no question. Oh, Eric. The black anodization with the carbon fiber, black bolts. I love the uh, contrast on the uh, backspacer. I'm wondering if this is titanium as well. It almost feels like it is. Oh, geez. I wish I didn't say I wanted the other one more than this one. I'd be happy with either one. This is, uh, this package is absolutely fantastic. Okay, on the black, you can see the uh, the travel uh, lock, the replaceable. See how deep that goes in there. And that's also inlaid into the frame, so there's gonna be no wiggle room whatsoever. A lot stronger than just bolting a piece on for serviceability. Truly, truly gorgeous piece. Yeah, feels as sturdy as the other one. Really is the same base model, just some different aesthetics. Final thought, fantastic. I'm gonna give it a little bit of critique. Uh, logoing, I don't know if that makes it look less um, rich, but I think the logoing might want to be reconsidered. Especially when you close it, it cuts off a little bit of that logo. Um, I think I would remove that logo, quite frankly, and have it, you know, laser etched in a different way. Either into the frame, somehow maybe put your QSP or something in the spine, but that does throw me off a little bit. Other than that, this is a world-class piece. Very, very capable of hard use. Travel is consistent with the other one for lock. As you bring it back and really torque on it, it's not moving at all, which means all the frame and pin, everything is really well built. Yeah, that is one gorgeous, solid piece. I can guarantee you it's going to perform. So I'm glad you brought up the logo. And, you know, I, 
I had thought it in my first impressions video, but I don't think I ever really said it. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am glad that you brought that up because I think that if the blade was just clean, that would work a little bit better. And if you look, they also utilize the triangle as a symbol for their brand. Mm -hmm. The triangle simulating or representing, I should say, quality, service, oh, cool. and price. Okay. So the fact that they have that symbol right in the pivot um, means that, quite frankly, they don't really need to have that uh, you know, logo right on the side. Now, to your point, they could easily put QSP nice and small. You know, you see other companies doing it nice and small on the side, and I think it would overall enhance the look. And not that it makes it necessarily look cheap, but I think to your point, it, it, it takes away from the sort of richness and the overall class of the blade. And, you know, I understand branding. It's a very important thing. I just think there's a time and a place for it. Yeah, I agree. You know, I love the uh, triad. That's actually really cool. And that's, and that's how we're looking at that. The level of machining on that triangle is spectacular. It is flawless. And that, that, that's a focal point to me. And that uh, triply translates into the rest of the quality of finish. That's a strong focal point. Take this off completely, and I would maybe even laser etch it very, very small, right at the tip right here. Mm. Okay, no paint, no, you know, um, whatever. Just laser etch it in titanium, subtle. And this way you have, you know, uh, try it on one side, and you have this here. Um, I may even want to remove the steel type. I think in the end of the day, you know, you know your steel type. Um, if you're going to do it, maybe remove it from there. And I tell you, it'd be pretty interesting if you, I, I'm liking, because the, the level of tolerances nowadays is so tight. Right. Maybe put it right, like on, the spine. right on the spine. I agree. You know what I mean? That'd be nice. This way, this way your lateral looks to the knife. It's a true gentleman's folder. Outrageous. I'm blown away at the level of detail, machining, and aesthetic beauty of that blade. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? I like when you see something that's a really great product, and you can be super picky and nitpick small little details, but that's all you're picking apart. It's like, you know, you, you can be hypercritical, and it, it's an opinion, right? There's nothing fundamentally wrong with this knife. The machining, the quality, the fit, the finish, the color, the design, the tolerances, all the important major aspects are all there. We're nitpicking a logo and a placement of where you put the blade steel labeling. I can't think of any, <laughs> that's, my only, that's my only nitpick, but, right. but you go back to a gorgeous looking blade. All I wanna do with this knife right now is start to process some fat wood. Well, you can only choose one. Wait a second now. <laughs> Wait a second now. What do you mean choose? You can only choose one. You said already that you choose this one. You already said that you wanted this one, but now you're holding that one saying you're going to process wood with it? Wait, you're not... You're not... Wait a second. Choose one. Well... Are you are you saying, hey, what one would you pick? What, or one, is what, this a... what one would you pick? If right you here. had both of these and right you here. had to choose. Right here. That's the one? Yes, that is the one. All right, so comparing them again, just side by side, basically what we're talking about is two knives, uh, similar build quality, very, very similar in the overall uh, design elements. A little bit different here. We got that sort of little, mm. uh, you know, oversized nail nick, right? Yeah, which is cool. A um, little different in the overall uh, color scheme. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this one being fully titanium with the carbon fiber. This one being the black titanium with black and the blue anodized. Uh, very, very nice look. And um, yeah, so uh, what do you think? These would uh, melt away in, in Survival Attitude's pocket? All day long. And I did not carry any type of knife with me today because I know you usually come pretty equipped, Eric. I try to come equipped. You really do. And. Uh, I'm serious when I say this. I would be so proud to carry this every single day in the bush and in a black tie event, which, you know, I, I've just recently gotten a couple and I've carried some, some knives with me. This would be um, so awesome to carry in any type of situation. And you put this thing, I can already foresee this thing through years, years of hard use. There's nothing that's going to wear out on it. There's no way, shape, or form. This knife is going to perform as well as it looks. I can, I can, I can pretty much guarantee it. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're going to hold on to that thing and slip it in your pocket, you got to do a quick Instagram blast. 
I could do that. Deal. All right. Okay. So now we're going to come around full circle. Okay. Where do we start this conversation? I believe it was talking about quality, service, and price. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, price. Okay. Right? Price and value. Something that I don't often cover on my channel. Right. But I told you guys, today we are. Okay. Um, so at this point, I mean, we have not talked about how much these cost. Nope, I don't know. All right. And I think we should talk about competitive options. Okay. Now, um, off camera, we were just kind of kicking the thought around that there is a knife that a lot of people would say, I would say, is sort of like staple, uh, you know, go-to sort of quality benchmark and something that's a very popular knife. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts? The first thing when I, when I saw it, and now I'm holding it, and now I know the materials. I would, I would have to say this is comparative to a Chris Reeve Sebenza. So the Sebenza. Yeah, we have titanium frame, titanium frame. We have ball bearings, ball bearings. We have uh, S35 VN, and I believe that's the same steel as a Sebenza. So um, feel. I've never held a Sebenza. My buddy Chris just got an Akusi. But I would tell you, this is the highest quality knife that I've ever held. I have a lot of Spydercos, I have a lot of Benchmades and others um, for hard use, despite the appearance, which is gorgeous, but for hard use and materials used, I'm going to have to say it's a, it's a Benza grade. Um, this is serious equipment right here. It's nice. I'm very, very happy with this. I think it's um, you know beautifully done. and. Um pretty interesting when you can start putting this in the same category and classification as other well-known brands out there. Now, uh, we do have some other competitive options okay. here on the table. I think okay. it would be worth rolling some of these in and talking about them. I'd like to see those. All right, so again, talking about competitive options. Now, these are all in, I'd say, like a variety of price ranges. Um, and the reason why I brought these particular knives, I've actually covered them on my channel. Um, and they are all titanium, hmm. S35VN, ball bearings, Chinese made. Okay. So very uh, consistent across the board. Mm -hmm. So um, it sort of puts these in a very even category. Now, as we get into this, as I mentioned, packaging is not always the most important thing, but you will see that these other companies put a little more time into their packaging. Now, I'm not entirely bent on that. Again, I think it's gonna be, um, you know, the, the, the knife in my opinion, that's why you're buying this. But having nice packaging, again, really, wow. really great. I mean, you see what some of these other companies are doing. So Artisan putting a huge amount of effort into their packaging and quality. Now, I was curious about your thoughts. What do you think about this case? Do you need the case? Is it worth spending the money, having it part of the overall package? For me personally, I plan on using these knives. They're gonna get dings, they're gonna get scratched. I'm gonna use them. I don't need a case. This is not gonna be a safe queen for me. Uh, I, I have slightly different uh, opinions about uh, casing and packaging. And already, I, I've never held or used one of these. This is somewhat exciting to me. I like a zippered case. That's ballistic nylon. And now let me just get into the, the knife. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this thing is a little tank. Wow. That is... Uh, Pure evil looking Terminator esque. Woo! So that's the Artisan Cutlery Proponent Dark Pinkerton design. Um, you know, and, and you know, again, just showing some competitive options in certainly completely different knife. I mean, nothing remotely the same about these shape and size and amount of material, but I'm just showing you know some examples of things that I have in my collection and just a discussion point. So at some point, we're gonna lay these all out and go through the overall cost, but just wanted to show you another competitive option. <laughs> Blue or purple, I am colorblind. Yeah, this one felt heavier opening it up. <laughs> <laughs> what? what is this? What is going on here? What is going on? This is, uh, I mean, I think I'd carry the black one if I had a, uh, a Humvee. This is what I carry if I drove an uh, M1 Abrams tank. Oh my goodness. I, I, I can't even describe the, the, the capability of, the, of this knife. Um, Wow, 
Feels good. Feels really good. Jesus, this thing is impressive. Artisan cutlery, they're doing a nice job. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous rig. I don't know what else to say. I'm like dumbfounded. I just wanna, I just wanna cut things, break things, pry things, build things. <laughs> Um, I, I build things up, I cut them down. <laughs> I, exactly. I mean, Jurassic Park, I mean, there's nothing to this thing. I, I, listen, if Godzilla himself were to carry a knife, I think he would carry this knife right here. Okay, the more I research Kaiser, the more I have uh, respect and intrigue about them. If I can intriguely get this box open. Ooh. Wow. Feels fantastic. That recurve, that is one good looking blade. Nice. One handed all the way through. Nice clip. Standoffs, sharp looking. 35 VN. I'm gonna have to say that is a competitive option. That's nice. Packaging in these Kaisers is amazing. Almost like it's uh, bought at Tiffany's. <laughs> Tell you what though, there are a lot of people who like a uh, really fine timepiece and who do put a lot of weight into the packaging. This is uh, some of the most top packaging, elegant packaging I've ever seen. Good strong Velcro, nice pouch, great branding. Hmm. Strong detent. We have a, uh, call this a uh, Warncliffe. Feels really good, really strong. Thumb stud, right or left. See a uh, common denominator? I really do. Similar designer? I, Might be the same. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. This knife does feel outstanding. Thick steel. S35VN? Yep. Oh, that's sharp. That can be put to some serious hard use. Nice clip. A gorgeous, gorgeous piece. There's actually purpose to that machining, those milling. That's a stellar, stellar blade. Nice design. Very functional, very elegant. Evil looking at the same time. Will satisfy the uh, tactical folks as well as it will practical. And gentlemen's. A very modern twist concept hasn't even hit the market yet love the packaging Ooh. Ooh, wow perfect centering Whoa. we have tanto nice flat top good clip strong clip out backspacer I like that with the uh, lanyard hole through the backspacer a little cut out there oh that tumble this is a nut wow feels good nice blade length concept that is one sturdy blade I said the bar has been raised lately clean too clean look oh that's something spectacular right or left handed open nice oil blade <laughs> sweet ride Okay, Joe, so now we've actually looked at some reasonably competitive options. Now, of mm -hmm. course, different styles, different yeah. shapes, different sizes, same material for, through the handles, mm -hmm. uh, same material through the blade, mm -hmm. and also the ball bearing system. Now, okay. we're gonna play this quick game. Like yeah. I said, it's gonna be sort of uh, name your price, right? So I've written down all the prices of these, and we're gonna go through them, and we're gonna end with the QSP, just trying to get an idea of where you think these fall in the market. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first, let's let let's start with artisan cutlery. I mean, these things are um, obviously beautiful. Each knife here, you know, you've, you've commented, they're all gorgeous in their own right, nicely machined, and, th and that's another thing is, you know, people have, have historically had an issue with Chinese manufacturing. Um, these companies here, they are serious. They're serious and it, it shows. It shows in the quality of craftsmanship, the appearance, they're uniquely different in their own way. But let's get right into the price. Let me know when you want me to start. And again, I'm, I'm only going, I don't know the pricing is at all. Um, and, and quite frankly, I have only one Chinese knife in my whole collection. It's a little twenty dollar buck Chinese knife, and I'm yep. gonna tell you, I love it. Yep. I think buck 
when they were looking to make a little bit of lower cost option, they chose China, but they oversaw the process. And that is as good as an American made knife. I love it. These are really high end knives. Um, so I'm not really as concerned about where they manufactured because again, the bar has been raised and that makes things more competitive. Great YouTube reviewers like yourself get into close detail about it and you can make a decision whether you want to carry that or not. Okay. But so you want me to go into what I think the MSRP? Yeah, what it, well, uh, more like if you went to buy it today, how much you'd pay for it? How much I'd pay for it? How much, if you went to buy it <coughs> online today, what you would find it for? Not necessarily like MSRP, but what you could okay. find it for if you went to buy it at a, you know, an online retailer. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to say this knife right here, I, I don't think you're going to get it less than... I'm gonna have to say 400, 450, and quite frankly, I think that could be on the low side. It's a big piece of steel, not that much. It's uh, 212 dollars. 212 is is retail. 212 is yeah retail. What you could buy it today. 212 if you went online. You could you could pick this up today for 212 bucks. I think that's ridiculous. That's a steal. I, I can't understand how this knife is that that cost for the quality <laughs> materials. Yeah. That's like that's dude, we're talking All, titanium. Like a huge ton of titanium. Yes. 212. 212. Okay. Would, so, not, would not have guessed that. Yeah. All right. So moving on. All right. Only because I know what this is selling for. Um, and sometimes people will say just because there's more material doesn't mean it's any less cost. So I'm going to have to say this one's 200. Yeah, very close. 187. Okay. So very close. Okay. So the Kaisers. This one here is the Rogue. Okay. So what do you think here? Rogue, I'm going to have to say. 140. Very close. 125. And it varies in price, but you can get this for 125 if you buy it today. It's, they seem to be on sale lately. It's an amazing price. Now, this one here. This Kaiser, I almost feel like it's a little step up in machining and not fin to finish, but it's just got really soft edges. I'm going to have to say this one here would be 160. 180. 180. Yep. I could see that. There is a lot more to this knife. Yep. You, and, and, it's, and it's not easy to get that recurve done. That's, that's, that's hand done. Right. So yeah, I could see that all day. You can get a slightly better price from time to time, but roughly about 180. I could see that all day. Uh, so the concept. Oh yeah, this is a special knife to me. I don't know anything about this brand, but man, I tell you, this is a serious equipment and some very, very fine detail in here. Uh, I am going to say this is going to be 190. Yeah, they think they're looking to MSRP around like the 2 225 mark. They haven't set all their pricing yet. They're not even on the market yet, but I think these are going to ring in right around the $200 mark. You know what? The real carbon fiber, yeah, that's going to do it. That's that's not that's not that's that's expensive to add on. So yeah, I, I would stand corrected. I would say two and a quarter all day. All right. So then that leaves us to the QSPs. I mean, we've gone into great detail on these. We've looked at the quality. Um, we have compared these against other competitive options out there, at least in terms of the material. Now, what about the price? I mean, again, for what you are getting, I'm going to throw a number out there, and I just feel that, I, and I know I, I do it. I couldn't do it a couple times a year, but once a year I would treat myself. I'm going to have to say all day long, 275. 275 bucks. Oh yeah. And so comparing these against all these other options. There's a reason why I'm saying 275 is because the mindset behind these knives are proving to me that every single thing is softened. Um, you're dealing with a high-end knife compared to others. We do have some sharpness in here, okay? We have um, a blade that is not just tumbled, but it looks like it's actually ground a little bit to get that chamfering. That's, when you introduce more that could lead to a mistake, you have to weigh that into the total cost of producing ones that are batch production ready. There's gonna be mistakes when you have to hand file these things and grind them that you have to toss it aside. It's gonna to add to the price. So yeah, I'm gonna say all day long to me, this knife is is right sub 300 bucks. 109. 109. 109. 109. If you went up 109.99, sorry. 109.99. <laughs> 
So if you wanted this blade today, you could pick it up for $109.99. I actually love the packaging. It's a non-dyed cardboard. That's great. That's better for econess. It opened up easier than any other ones. Again, I'm just saying I'm a packaging snob a little bit. That's nice. It's also great for storage. But going back to the blade itself, 109. That's solid for that price. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, and and it, I'm glad we came full circle, right? Quality. Oh yeah. And price. Ridiculous. Now, Too I, low. we haven't tested the service part of it, but so far as a reviewer, I've been very impressed at their communication okay. and the, the amount of back and forth that we've had and their communicative nature um, and their you know generosity to help the channel and support it and to get some products out so everybody could see them. So quality service and price, man, so far they have absolutely nailed it and they're living by their name. They're living by their name. I, I just, for some reason, out of all these knives, and these are some amazing pieces, <laughs> this one resonates with me more than any others. Um, and uh, are you telling me that I, I get to use this knife? Um, I, I get to take it home with me? What, I, I'm confused. We'll, this we'll, is too... You're... We'll keep this in the family. You can... You can own, enjoy, and love this knife if you would so please. Listen, um, I've gifted you, uh, you know, a nice Ontario knife, something that I know you didn't have in your collection. And um, in the end of the day, to support the channel, to go back around and to talk about it a couple years from now, I'm very, very happy to represent the brand um, in both QSP, uh, Outer Limitless, which is one of my favorite uh, channels of all time, and uh, the efforts put into producing something that is just elegant, get robust and I want to see this brand take take off and if we can help them in any way um, and I would never ever say anything that I didn't believe in uh, this is something that's so I have an attitude to be proud to wear every day this is this is boss nice well, thank you so enjoy much it, man. Man. Yeah. thank you so much <laughs> well so all right guys there you have it a look at these QSP puffin folding knives very very nice now hopefully just a first look of many blades to come um and i hope you enjoy this man so anyway guys there you saw a number of competitive options our overall thoughts on uh the value um very 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 exciting really is um i can't tell you how much i enjoyed this this day this knife and uh you're gonna hold on to the black one yep i have this one all right, so we're brothers in arms, man. Just how it, it goes. All Sweet. Right. Thank you. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. We'll see you soon.